Hi guys, welcome to Hoops Junction. Happy New Year. I know everybody has their resolutions. Everybody has something that they want to change about themselves this year for 2016. I wish you a prosperous 2016. Hope you brought in a new year with lots of fun, family, love, and friends. This segment we're going to be talking about New Year's resolutions for NBA players in 2016. Now, this is going to be a little touchy for some people, some folks, you know, if you, especially if you're hoopers. But we're going to get through this and hopefully NBA players as well as regular basketball players can follow through with these resolutions. Okay? So, number one. People, big men that play basketball, they have to improve their post game. They have to step up their post game. They have to be able to finish with either hand in the post and finish on either block on the post. So that means jump hooks, up and unders, uh, feathery floaters, using the backboard. Anything to improve your post game, you have to do it this year. And that includes NBA players, Dwight Howard, Blake Griffin. This is your resolution that Hoops Junction, we're giving it to you. You got to do it. You got to improve your post game. No more posting up for the three-point line and no more uh, crazy running hooks, Dwight Howard. We want to see great post moves either out over either shoulder and finishing with either hand or two hands, finishing strong. Big Ben today, they're not scoring as many points. It's like they, they don't show enough skill. You know, Shaq was averaging like 30 and 10 at, at, you know, at his peak. You know what I'm saying? Like Will Chamberlain, like, you know, 30 and 30. Uh, or Bill Russell, you know, 18 points, 25 rebounds, you know, or 30 rebounds. So come on, guys, step your post game up. Number two. Number two resolution for basketball players, especially in the NBA, making free throws. This year, we don't want to see any more DeAndre Jordan, Hacker Jordan, any of that. People have to make a concerted effort to improve their free throws, which means seeking people that do shoot free throws well and try to learn from them. I know they a lot of guys have free throw coaches and uh, experts, free throw experts. No, 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 no. Whoever's shooting a great percentage from the free throw, go to them. And figure out what they're doing. And then try to mirror what they're doing. You know, they say um, imitation is the best form of flattery. But it, it also, when you're imitating someone, you could actually recreate some of their successes if you do it the right if you do it the, their way. If you try it different ways. So, with that being said, every NBA team should be shooting 70 to 75% from the free throw line. You know, we want to see a high 75, 75, 76% range. People need to improve their free throws. If we can see the game improve, everybody's shooting more threes, everybody's uh, uh, doing more layups and dunks and things like that, we need to see better free throw shooting. All right? Another thing that we want to see for NBA players, especially for NBA stars, and if just regular basketball players, we want to see the best players guarding each other. You know, I'm tired of watching games where, you know, LeBron and Carmelo playing against each other, but they're not guarding each other starting out the game. That's that's really dry. It's not entertaining. And, you know, yes, you can watch LeBron get busy or Carmelo score a lot of points, but it's not like he's scoring a lot of points on the star. You see what I'm saying? Like, in the past, you know, watching, like, uh, the Philadelphia 76ers play against the Lakers, you know, Tyron Lue rarely guarded Iverson. It was always Kobe Bryant. And so when Iverson was going crazy, you know, he would go crazy on Kobe Bryant and vice versa. You know, Iverson would guard Kobe. So these are the things we want to see. Michael Jordan, he guarded Gary Payton and vice versa. Gary guarded, I want Mike, let me guard him. I'm going to shut him down or whatever. So those are the things that we want to see. We want to see the stars going head to head. See, Gary Payton was a point guard. Michael was a shooting guard, but he still was the best on his team. He's the best on his team. He's like... It collided. That's a real collision. Not the, let me let my guy guard him. He's going to light him up. And, you know, maybe at the end of the game, I'll guard him. It doesn't make for a really good storyline. And we can never really see if, you know, like, let's just say one-on-one, -on -one, who will win what. Because you're always pushing somebody else to defend them. I know they're worried about the fouls or whatever. But if you think about it, these guys are superstars or stars. They're not going to call as many fouls on them as as if it were like a regular person guarding your star. They call everything. They call a touch foul. But when Melo's on LeBron, they don't call touch fouls. See what I'm saying? So those are the things that we want to see. Last but not least, we need to bring the mid-range game back. 
Too many guys are shooting threes that cannot shoot threes. They're not good three-point shooters. They need to stop. And what that means is they have to go back to the mid-range. And they say that mid-range is the most inefficient shot in basketball. I completely disagree with that. What happened What happened was to that is teams are shooting way more three-pointers. So, therefore, they're practicing way more three-pointers. So, when a guy has an open, wide-open 15-footer, 20-footer, He's not accustomed to shooting that anymore because he's just practicing threes and layups and dunks. So when he gets a wide open shot that he's supposed to make, he's not accustomed to getting those in the offense because all they're shooting is threes and shooting layups. A wide open mid-range shot is highly effective, especially if you do it over and over again. If you're able to reproduce it, it is great. It is awesome. Michael Jordan made a career shooting mid-range shots. And you want to know his lifetime shooting percentage? It's 49.8%. It's 50%. So I don't want to hear anything about it's an inefficient shot. If you get a wide open mid-range shot, I would take that over a tough defended three or a wide open three from a person who can't shoot well. So those are, that's what I'm talking about. you got to definitely bring the mid-range game back. A lot of you guys cannot shoot threes. You have hitches in your shot. You're not fluid. Um... You're, you're leaving points on the table. That's why a lot of teams don't score as high because they're just leaving points on the table because they're trying to shoot threes, which they can't make. You see what I'm saying? I see a lot of big men shoot threes. You know, get you a 15-footer. Get you a 20-footer a, a wide open. With that ball moves, you will get a wide open shot, 15-footer, knock it down. It's automatic. Carl Malone, 15-footers. My, uh, Michael Jordan, mid-range. Um, who else can I think about? Gary Payton, mid-range. Isaiah Thomas, mid-range. All of these guys, Hall of Famers, because they can shoot the mid-range shot and knock it down consistently. See what I'm saying? So you definitely, they def players got to bring back that mid-range. You got to be able to shoot all lengths of the court. And the closer you are to the basket, the higher chance you got of your shot going in. So all of this stuff about it's inefficient. Yeah, it's inefficient if you're shooting it contested, of course. But any shot is inefficient if you're shooting it contested. Wide open mid-range, I'm taking that every single time so these are the resolutions I have better post up play NBA stars guarding each other improve free throw shooting and last but not least bring back the mid-range game we want to see this in the NBA this four this four the four horsemen hopefully we can see that but those are the resolutions I have for the NBA and basketball players all over the world let me know what are your some of your resolutions for 2016 and if, if they're anything basketball related or career related to basketball. This is Vlad from Hoops Junction where hoops means hoopla. Like, comment, and subscribe. Take care. Happy New Year.